Hello Stormwater Designers, welcome back to Clear Creek Solutions Instructional Videos and today we're going to be going over the aquifer element in EPA Swim. We've been going over some other elements in our EPA Swim series and we also have 20 plus other videos on how to use the software so you can find that playlist in the description box if you want to learn more. Now we're getting into groundwater aquifer and this is a more complicated element to use in EPA Swim, uh, not always typically used, um, but it's really important that we understand its uh, particular uses in the software. I also have a sample project that we're going to pull up and take a look at. But I would definitely refer you to the EPA.gov manual for EPA SWIM uh, 5.1. This is what I have open and this is what is describing how this element works and some of the factors involved here. So you can see there's quite a bit of characteristics in the element form. And even some equations outlining what, what this purpose and function is of the groundwater aquifer. And so I will go in and explain uh, some of these other things here. But you can see that there's a lengthy description uh, in the manual. And that's not a bad place to look uh, for trying to understand an element like this. Uh, if we go into the groundwater equation editor is used to supply a custom equation. So you can use custom equations for your groundwater editor or some of the defaults that they have included here including setting your own infiltration we went a little bit into that how we can modify our infiltration rate in epa swim it has horton set here but we know that there's a couple other uh, ways that we can set that but you can also determine things like green amped parameters the suction head conductivity initial deficit and even curve number infiltration parameters as well so i would suggest also reading that section to learn a little more about the groundwater flow function which is a part of the aquifer but if i go to the software here we can see that you can add an aquifer by going plus just like any other element, although it doesn't show up uh, in the space or like a, like a rain gauge or subcatchment would. But we can see that if we go to aquifer, we can find aquifer one. If we double click, we can see all of its properties here. So the name, that's pretty straightforward. Uh, porosity is just our standard porosity, right? Volume of voids to total volume of solids. And there is a wilting point, which is the residual moisture content of a completely dry soil. It's a fraction, obviously. Same thing with the soil moisture content uh, after all free water has drained. Then there's a conductivity, which is a saturated hydraulic conductivity. The slope of the log conductivity and then tension slope. So you can see this is a lot of different factors here. Uh, the upper evap fraction, the lower evap depth, the lower groundwater loss rate. And so you can see there's a lot of ways that we could potentially make this groundwater well work or this aquifer work or uh, we could definitely mess it up with the element form if we're not careful. So keep in mind that you have measured or have accurate data for all of these different uh, parameters here when you're entering it into the aquifer editor because that'll greatly impact how it runs and how it influences uh, the, your final results in the software here. So you can see there's no upper EVAP pattern, which is the monthly pattern of adjustments to upper EVAP, EVAP fraction, and that is uh, optional in this case. If I run this here, the run was successful. Remember, we can go to report. We can take a look at graph. We can look at the profile graph. Um, you can see there's no nodes here, however, in uh, this specific uh, model here. But we can look at subcatchments. We can look at the nodes. We can look at the systems. But uh, what I want to emphasize is that you need to make sure you set up your groundwater aquifer properly, that you have all these different variables in mind and uh, measured properly for, for your setup. You can see here that we just have a rain gauge. It's going to the subcatchment in which the aquifer uh, has been attached and is going to be able to measure uh, that groundwater movement uh, in EPA swim. I wouldn't say hydrology is one of the strengths of EPA swim. Um, it is better for measuring hydraulic functions and pipe systems and things like that, but there are some uh, hydrology that it can perform in the software, although not to the best degree. So that is one of the other hydrology elements, like I said, is the aquifer. Some of these other ones are a little more peripheral and don't have as much impact to the software, but then we're going to go into hydraulics elements. So that's a quick overview of the groundwater aquifer. If you have any questions, you can leave it in a comment down below. Definitely one of the more complicated elements. Like I said, I would just highly recommend going straight to the source and reading this section on the groundwater flow editor. If I search here, You can see that you can also find other sections on the aquifer if we just if we just do a con uh, straight control F search here. If I go to the start of the manual, let's find that here. You can see that it gives um, some introduction to aquifers 
and how to model them and things like that. So like I said, I would look into that specific uh, information there in the manual. It's described as a subsurface groundwater zone used to model the vertical movement of water infiltrating from the subcatchments that lie above them. So like I said, it's tied to the subcatchment. It's not an actual element that you place in the software, um, but it's going to be describing that water movement when raining on that subcatchment. So you need to make sure your subcatchment is set up properly, your rain gauge data is set up properly, and your aquifer is set up properly in order to get the proper results there. So like I said, anyways, that's a quick, quick overview of the aquifer. If you have any questions, leave it in a comment down below, and we will see you guys next time.